In the past decade, Iceland Air faced competition from WoW and more recently Play. How do they handle it and will they succeed in the future? In this last video of the three part series on aviation in Iceland, I look into the past and future of Iceland Air, their successes and their struggles. If you haven't watched the first two videos on the rise and fall of WoW and the up and coming new low cost carrier Play, I highly recommend you do so. So Iceland Air, how do they fit into the aviation industry in Iceland? Let's talk aviation. The history of Iceland Air dates back to 1937, when the airline Flugfelag was founded. The first aircraft they used was a Waco seaplane. The first years were a bumpy road, literally, as the aircraft crashed multiple times. In the beginning, they operated as the sole airline in Iceland. This would soon change, as seven years later, another airline was founded in Iceland, Lothlodia. In the first years of their operations, the airlines flew seaplanes, and they hadn't any airport on land to use. But after the war, the British helped building airports and their air force base in Reykjavik was handed over for commercial use. Not much later, both airlines expanded from domestic to intercontinental operations. To do this, they needed bigger planes and the Douglas DC-4 was just that plane. And in 1948, Lovely Deer operated their first flight to the United States. Both airlines coexisted for over two decades before they agreed to merge in 1973. For domestic operations, they would keep the name Flugverdier, but their international arm would assume the name Icelandair. The name Lofladir lives on, however, as well. In 2003, it was announced that a new airline was formed within the Icelandair group, Lofladir. They operate a mix of 737, 757 and 767 aircraft for wet lease and charter flights. Icelandair had quite an uneventful rise from the 80s on till the beginning of this millennium. In 2009, however, issues came forward. Due to a combination of short-term debt, and high than expected expenses, the airline was forced to financially restructure. They would complete this restructure in 2011, one year after the volcano outburst that severely disrupted the aviation industry for over a week. The outbreak, however, was not all bad and proved to be the starting point of their way up. Since WoW entered the market, aviation in Iceland grew every year until 2020. It is hard to say what the main factors were, although there are some I would like to point out. First of all, the volcano outburst mentioned before did have a positive effect on the tourism industry in Iceland. More tourism means more demand for air travel. While WoW focused on the low cost side of the market, Iceland Air did profit as well. As one of the two main carriers at the time, they, although more expensive, remained a good option for tourists. Next, the Iceland route became more popular as well. In 2009, 28% of the passengers of Iceland Air used Iceland as a short stopover to travel transatlantic. In 2019, this number has grown to 43%. In absolute numbers, this means that the number of passengers traveling with Iceland Air from Europe to the US or back grew fivefold during those 10 years as the passenger numbers for the group as a whole rose from 1.4 million in 2009 to over 4.5 million in 2019. I think that Iceland Air did well by combining the demand for transatlantic flights and the rising popularity of Iceland as a tourist destination by introducing a new product, the Iceland Stopover. Without becoming an advertisement for this, I think this is a very nice option. Essentially, they offer you to travel transatlantic and extend your transfer up to 7 days. This makes it very easy to add a city trip or a short round trip around the island at a relatively low cost, as you don't need an extra ticket. There were however also some troubles with their fleet. Iceland Air was one of the airlines affected by the Boeing 737 MAX groundings. In March of 2019, they operated 6 of the type next to 28 757 and 767 aircraft. Right after the groundings, they had some issues keeping the network as it was, but eventually they found a solution and leased one extra 757, three 767s and Airbus A319 to fill the gaps. Of course, this meant higher costs, and with no quick solution in sight for the MAX. In August of 2020, Boeing and Iceland Air announced that they had reached an agreement and that Iceland Air would receive financial compensation for the whole situation. Next to this, they would cut their order from a total of 16 aircraft to only 12. Seven of those will be the MAX 8 and five of the MAX 9 type. The future of the MAX at Iceland Air is still unknown. The F mentioned that it performs better than expected and that they see the MAX replaced part of their 757 fleet. However, the range is limited and this means that they might look at Airbus for an alternative. It is clear that the groundings didn't do the aircraft much good at Iceland Air. The future for Iceland Air is a bit undecided in my opinion. While the tourism market in Iceland will bounce back and demand for travel between Europe and the US will remain, it is hard to say what role Iceland Air will play. The new startup play tries to avoid making the mistakes that led to the fall of WoW, and with competition from JetBlue and North Atlantic, 
The market for transatlantic flights is getting saturated with many different options. Iceland Air has an ace up their sleeve with the stopover option, but will it be enough? Next to this, Iceland Air has an aging fleet, with the Boeing 757, their backbone, as a prime example. While the 737 MAX can be used to replace the aircraft on their shorter routes, they will need to find a replacement to keep operating their longer flights. They did not yet make a decision and it is a hard one. They may opt for an Airbus aircraft, more specifically the A321LR or XLR. They look good when you compare the range and passenger capacity to the 757. However, going for the A321 means that a large part of their employees, from pilots to mechanics, will need to be retrained. Up to this date, they haven't yet made a decision on which aircraft they will pick. What are your thoughts on Iceland Air? Which aircraft should they order to replace our aging 757s? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing to Let's Talk Aviation.